Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomex. This time I will show you how to use remote load to analyze a shaft subjected to combined loading. As always, let's create a new model first. I will use the unit system of millimeters and now I can import the geometry using step file format. The geometry is already imported, so I can create the mesh. I will specify meshing parameters, and this will be 20 millimeters for maximum element size. I can use the preview option, confirm this, and generate the mesh. The mesh is now generated, so let's proceed to the analysis setup. I can define material first. Uh, this will be steel material, just like in previous tutorials, and I will specify the same uh, elastic properties, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio uh, for this material. Now I can create a section. This will, this will be applied to the whole shaft and uh, with proper material selected. And now I could proceed to the uh, step setup, create a new step, define step related features such as boundary conditions and loads. But I'll create a reference point and rigid body constraint first. Uh, because in one of the previous videos I told you that rigid body constraints have several applications. They can be used to apply torque to uh, solid models uh, or they can be used to uh, create rigid parts uh, or remote loads and that's what we'll do today. Let's create a new, new reference point first. Uh, I have to specify coordinates. Uh, first of all, I will define offset in the z-axis uh, so that the point goes from this end to the other one. Mm, and now I will also have to specify offset in x-axis uh, so that the point is actually uh, at a remote location uh, from this face right here. Let's confirm this and now I can create a rigid body constraint. And this uh, reference point will be automatically selected. I just have to pick a face, uh, so this face right here. I can confirm this uh, and now we have a rigid body constraint defined uh, and you can see uh, the symbols of this constraint uh, and how the uh, load will be transferred uh, using this constraint from this point to this phase. Let's create a new step now. This will be static step with default settings. Uh, I can confirm this and now I'll create a boundary condition. Uh, this uh, shaft is supposed to be fixed at one end because it's a form of cantilever. Uh, so let's define a fixed boundary condition at this end. Mm, and uh, I also have to specify load. Uh, this will be concentrated force. Uh, I will choose the reference point that we defined uh, and uh, the load will be acting in y direction and the value is 8 kN, uh, so that's the, the load magnitude here. I can confirm this and now you can see uh, how the load acts with respect to this phase. This will cause both tor torsion and bending of the shaft. I can submit the analysis now uh, and it shouldn't take too long because the mesh is not so dense. The results are already available, so let's check them. Here you can see the deformation, but we are interested mainly in the stresses, so I'll uh, select the full Mrs. Stress plot. But first of all, let's take a look at the deformation of this model. Uh, I, will, I will choose a different view. Uh, let's make sure that we have a proper setting for, uh, for deformation scale factor. I could use automatic one, true scale, uh, turn it off, or you specify uh, my own value of the deformation scale factor, but I will stay with the automatic one. And now I can use animation uh, to see how this uh, how this shaft actually deforms. You won't uh, be able to see uh, torsion very well here, mainly bending. And that's because of the specific of this section. For rectangular section you would see uh, actual, actual torsion. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, rectangular section will be much more difficult to evaluate uh, in terms of stresses due to uh, stress concentrations in the corners. Uh, so I decided to use uh, circular section. Uh, but using this animation you should be able how the shaft deforms and you may even notice some torsion here uh, because it definitely occurs. So let's, uh, here are the, some animation settings. You can specify the number of frames per second and uh, other uh, options for the animation. Let's close this and stop the animation. Now let's check the stresses uh, according to the analytical solution. Uh, I'll use the query tool mm, to check the stress at, at different locations. And here's the analytical solution uh, for bending, torsion and combined loading. That's the full missing stress that we expect to have in this model. Uh, so let's see how it looks like uh, in the model. Uh, let's check some uh, locations for the stress. And you can see mm, that the values of the stress are very close to what we got from the analytical solution, especially here. Uh, you can notice there's a very good agreement with analytical solution. Uh, so we can say that the analysis were performed correctly. Of course, we could use uh, finer mesh to get even better results. Uh, but for now, this should be enough. Uh, so, so that's it for, for this uh, Prepomax tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. As always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.